God be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Yeah, let me let me say something. So, <laughs> hey, I've been, been listening to this conversation, and I wholeheartedly agree with Brother Jackson. Listen, listen. I don't know if you you really are thinking about what you're saying when you say uh, you don't have any rights. Not in, not in the kingdom, you don't. In the kingdom of God, you've been bought with a price. You are not your own. You've been bought by Christ. If you start thinking that you have rights, you have gone away from the very mandate of discipleship. Now, what we got to do is be very intentional about what our goal is. And the goal is to get the gospel to lost people. It's to bring light into darkness in a loving way. It's not, this. What, what's this pushback? Define pushback. I, I, in, in the final pushback, I would say no, that on. when you constrain me for the gospel, you become the thing you hate. Uh, well, I, I, well, I well tell you, if I you constrain you. me from preaching no. the fullness of the gospel, then you God. are really causing me not to be able to do what I've been mandated to do. No, no. nobody can stop you from doing what God called you to do. Exactly. You can't. I, you can't do I that. I, and I agree with that. But yeah, if you put laws in place that make it illegal, when I can do something, okay, so do it still doesn't stop you from, you from sharing the gospel. It doesn't. But do, do I mean, and I'm asking the question: Do we have the responsibility to ensure that those laws never come to pass, or that they have extreme know. problems? No, that's not your responsibility. That's God's you responsibility. But who's he going to work through? You do not. If God tells you specifically to go and stop a law from coming to pass, then you will know and you'll stop it from coming to pass. But until God speaks for you to go do such a thing, you share the gospel, period. You got to do it in love, period. Because if it's not done in love, it ain't gonna work. And it ain't gonna work. And so how could you call a soul a faggot in love? Woo! How can you? So, so if you're trying to show the love of God, who loves every soul, come on, brother, to the point of sending His Son, come on, to die the way He did on. on behalf of the world, who are we to not show love toward all men, right. understanding that their very soul? is at stake of being punished throughout eternity. Yeah. So what it is, is we show God's love no matter what. There is a, there's, is, a, there's, a, there's an entity that, that, that works, and we know it is. And the warfare was called in the garden when he said, I'll put enmity between your seed and her seed, and you know, they're gonna do what they do. So there is a conflict that's going on right now. We're trying to propagate the gospel and say that's doing everything he can to stop it from going forward. So he said that the devil comes immediately after the word is sown and snatches them out of, snatches out of the heart. So we're looking at the spiritual aspect and we can't just look at it and say like, oh, Satan doesn't exist and he's not trying to push the kingdom of God back. That's legit. Who is he gonna work through? He's gonna work through unsaved people. It's not like we don't love them, but can we do something to counteract their, 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 uh, their behaviors? We are literally being pushed into a box right now. This is, this is, this is, this is what you gonna their behavior with? Yeah. The word, just the word and the love of God. No, no, no. no. With, the, with the love of God is how, how you counteract. Now, now to hate. vote against, I mean, to speak out, we had a right as citizens of the United States right. of America because of the, right. what we're talking about you from the secular right. perspective, because we're looking at secular things that have been put in place. No, you secular don't have laws right, have been put in place that we can address through legislation. <laughs> hey, God. Voting, you, you're, not, you're not listening to, to, to Bishop because yes. I agree 100%. You don't have a right. You not have a kingdom. mandate. It's not, not your kingdom, right. No, not in the it, it is. It is commanded to you to share the gospel. That you don't have a choice. No, you don't. You really don't have a choice. But do you okay. have the? Then this is the question. Still, it's the question. Do we have a mandate to use the tools of this society to give us the freedom to do it? How? Why, how can you use no, you do not. tools that are against the very uh, uh, kingdom? that you come from.
because uh, you're not you're not a part of this word. world and this world system you right. are a part of a kingdom and the kingdom of heaven you are an ambassador so this world and this world system has no place Yo, for God. you Jesus Christ was the example. Jesus Christ was the example. If we were to answer Elder's question, there he was, right there on the cross. He 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 showed it. We will be persecuted for doing what it is that we want to do. Elder, we can try, we can try, we can try. We ain't worrying about this government here on this earth. What we do is what Jesus did. Jesus did exactly. He is the perfect example of what we're supposed to do. And what happened to him? He was crucified. We will likewise be crucified for his name's sake. And we need to be satisfied with that and be content with that. Be at peace with that. A, Don't try to change of all of this stuff. Don't try to change all of this stuff. What we do is seek the kingdom. We we preach the gospel. Don't worry about all of this stuff. This chaos is going to be there. And the point is, is that as this stuff moves forward, what does the Bible say? <laughs> when the gospel is preached, because that's what's supposed to happen. When the gospel is preached through all the world, things are going to happen right there. Gonna We're going to see it. Let me it's going to come to fruition. I gotta so we don't need to worry about it, man. Just do what you gotta do, bro. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about who, whether whether Trump goes in or whether whether um, Biden goes in. Don't worry about it. We just gotta do what we're supposed to do and preach this king. That's all we're supposed matter. to do. The thing about it is, it doesn't, it doesn't matter who's in the presidency. It's this world and this yeah. world's system, system that is against God. System. And so all <laughs> we have to do is the will of God. And he said to do it, and, and the only way you can do the will of God, it operates by love. Amen. Now here's a verse. Uh, for all the pushback people. Second Corinthians chapter 10. I'll just put it in, you in your turn. Verse number three of Where you at? Where you at? Okay. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse number three. Now, now listen to this. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not push back after the flesh. <laughs> Amen. Though we walk Amen. in the flesh, we do Ooh. not push back after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, of our pushing back, are not carnal, not in this world, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of the stronghold. Now, I, now, in my journal this week, I asked God this question. You see, he said that the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Paul said that we ought to put on the whole arm of God, yes, sir. that we might stand against the wiles of the devil. Yeah. How is none that being discussed? How is that not being discussed? What you don't realize is, you pushing back out there in the street against demonic power, what do you think? What do you think the outcome is gonna be? We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're yeah. not wrestling against mortal men. No. But behind the scene, you're dealing with principalities and power and real reality right. that control over the hearts and minds of men. Amen. So, so what I want to know is, what if all of a sudden you understood that you really are not fighting against flesh and blood? That you really are fighting against demonic power? And if you put on the whole armor, if you really understood that the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. I want to know that on your knees, there might, can we agree to come together at a time, you get on our knees, that we can affect the change of what's happening in the atmosphere by doing what God told us to do. Not going out there trying to push back, you go out there, this is the pushback you need to be, you need to be employing. You need to get some knee pads, and we need to get a green time. You get on that knee before God said, look, you told us to be salt and you told us to be light. Now it's your responsibility to create the opportunity to do that. And whatever hell comes against us in the process, it's your responsibility, Lord God, to keep that which we've committed on you against that day. To, to really just trust God and know that God is faithful to fulfill what he has promised. Amen. He's the one sending us into this. Yeah. Like lamb before the slaughter. <laughs> yes, sir. We're being sent in. That's right. <laughs> and I'm sitting there saying that this, this other stuff about worrying about being forced to bake a cake, worrying about whether somebody 
can walk around to it. What the heck I worry about that when I got, got nothing to do with their soul. Come on. You know, we we we've already determined that we are to live by faith, and faith is the substance which we've determined is the reality, God's reality, the substance of things hoped for. So we're we're it we're we're to walk in the things that we hope that God wants in this world to manifest. So then you look at uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it uh, says, second, casting I'm... down all imaginations, right? all imaginations. So they are imagining, they're imagining their own reality that is not of God. Come on now. So by putting on the whole armor, we cast down the their imaginations and everything that is every high thing that is exalted up against yeah, the knowledge. knowledge of God. Come on now. And we bring that unto captivity and captive we captive we bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So if we're walking in love, knowing that these people have their own imaginations of how reality is for them our only avenue into their soul is through love and obedience of God's word okay so you can't you can't affect a soul outside of love There's, and I, I, I agree with you in that regard but we are, and I, I say this in the fullness. No, you don't. <laughs> because yeah, I do, I really do. But but the thing is that the, the preparation got to be there because this is not this is not a this is not See, a stagnant environment that we're working in. But, but, this is dynamic, but, and Satan is literally trying to get us to stop preaching the gospel See, in the United States. This America. is something that that we tend to come up on a lot, and 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 it it bothers me because it is a practice that sticks out more than anything when it comes to things that are not of God. Right. And we 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 always end up on homosexuality and it becomes a big thing. But all sin all is sin. equal. So why 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 is this one more pronounced pro I mean profound than any other one? I think so, because the enemy is building his forces up around that. What? That is that that is the flight that is the no. flagship of the whole of the movement. That's what's coming against the household of God right now. And what you're gonna see that take place. No, there's there's more no, things. Bro, brother, than what that, that is, what that is is the little shiny glimmer. Yeah. That's all. That's the little thing. Hey, I'm gonna hold this up, and that's the thing that's gonna get your attention. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot going I, on. You know, that's well, all see, that's, it is. There, there's so, things that don't let that, that don't let that happen. No, don't let I, that I think I think what, what we're gonna see, and I'm not of the, the situation but it's going to manifest but why is that such persecution a the persecution of the church is on the rise no, but I, and that's what i'm we, saying we, prepared we understand that, 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 that that's, that's not any question god yeah, told us that. <laughs> that, that that's the man who's prophesied right that's you a prophecy and and that's the thing this this is this is this is addisonism exactly which is basically godism you're <laughs> the communion for because brother. all right be, because the bottom line is if we're sharing the gospel none of this other stuff matters Perfect. and we said there sin. is not one sin that the gospel does not handle exactly now we got to understand these people they are the way they are because of the sin uh-huh Amen. Adam's right. sin they are right. born the way they are born, not because of God. God didn't design them that way. Come on now. And, and I, Satan designed them that way after the fall. Once he got authority from Adam, then all this stuff started happening. I mean, God didn't put murder inside of Cain. I mean, look, and look, and look, look at Evan. And I'm concerned about what the ones that have been raped when they're little kids, raped in prison. I mean, forced to become something. And, and so we have no sympathy for these people. I, I, think, 
I think what, what, what you're seeing is, yeah, it's not, it's not necessarily the issue of sympathy. If, if, if you you get blinded when you're a child and walk out in front of a truck, you're just a dick. It's not your fault that you're blind, but you're still going to get hit. And, and, and when we look at sin, we have to look at sin as something that's lethally affecting a person's soul. But what happens if I look at somebody that's talking about sin and don't sin. feel it? I want to ask Brother Johnson a question. I have a question for you. Yes. So, what if your pushing back jeopardizes your chance to actually do what God called you to do? When I, when I say what I say is, and I and I'm a hope that my pushing no, 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 back no, is going to enable no, no. me to do that. I want to know: Are you willing to push back if your push back is going to jeopardize your opportunity to actually be the salt and light that God called you to be? No. I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't do that. Uh, because, I mean, eventually, on one on one on one basis, we got to show love to anybody and everybody that we come in contact with, even to our enemies. So we got that as a standard. We know that's the truth. But what I'm addressing in this situation is a situation where we are within a country that allows us to have an opinion concerning its laws. What laws? But the kingdom doesn't allow you to have an opinion. Legitimate. It doesn't. To, so the kingdom has mandated. You can find somebody between it. being a part of the kingdom and being a part of the world. And being a part of the kingdom and being a part of the world. You're not in, listen, you are in this world, but you're not of this world. No, brother. You're in this world, but you're not of this world. You're not, you're not red or blue. So there's no or, need for Libertarian. Yeah. You gave up all of that when you embraced Christ. Well, so we should not oppose. I mean, it's like if we're just not a part of the system, period, then why do we waste our time going to stand in these long lines? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, here we go. Well, they're, they're, because they're, we, we still are in this world. And if you are in that line because you believe that God is going to use your being in that line to further his kingdom, that's the only reason you ought to be in that line. Yeah. <laughs> now, that makes sense. I agree with you 100%. And that was my my whole my. my well, this is my thing. thing. I'm a I, I vote for people who are more more in line with <laughs> with some godly principles than those who are not. Yeah. Those who are are and 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 granted, look, I am a man of color, so why would I pick somebody who does not care for or or who is against folks of color. No, okay. I, mean, look, so now, I have children yeah. in this world. Right, right. And if and, and just for 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 their livelihoods, yeah. I'm I'm gonna vote for somebody who is going to actually make their lives a whole lot better as as long as and, and as well mine to give me opportunities to actually exist in this in this world. And that's so, exactly what I'm saying. Now, if I vote for somebody who wants to make people of color us slaves again, to where they're going to control my life and dictate how I'm supposed to live my life, right? Now, why, why would I do that? I'm with you on that. I'm with you on 100. I am a, a, a son of God. Even before I'm a man of color, I'm a son of God. Because at some point, I'm laid in vessel down, but hopefully, this soul going to stay intact. Why would I vote for laws? or people who would put constraints on me as a citizen of the kingdom of God. Because they all have. They all have. They well, all have. Sure. It's just it's just who is better for you. Uh, hey, let me get a minute. Let me, let, me, let me chime in. Let me chime in. Let me chime in, Elder. Hey, check this out. Let's go back to uh remember when when uh Jesus said, you know, those that are the things of God give to God, those that are things of Caesar give to Caesar. Remember that, Elder? Yes, sir. Okay, that would be a, an example of what you're talking about right now. Those individuals had to operate. Hey, you know, they they were you know living in, under that government, the rules, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure some of the things that you know when they gave their taxes and all the other stuff to Caesar, there were some things that they didn't agree with, but they did it anyway. So that being said, but Jesus made it clear: those that are of uh, those things that are of God, give to God. That's what we need to do. Okay, in that respect, and. I'm not threading the needle here, but obviously we got to live and breathe. We got to do what we got to do, right? So voting, whether you vote for the, the, the Democrats, the Republicans, or whoever, okay, you exercise your right to vote because that makes practical sense where we are. You can't get, you cannot, you can't, or not vote. And then, you know, just don't complain. Yeah. So don't, I don't, I wouldn't get caught up in trying to, 
uh, figure all of those little nuances out. The thing is, is just be concerned with what is of the kingdom of God. And if anything that you find yourself doing, all right, or contributing to that is not of the kingdom of God, then hey, that's what we pray about. And, and this is a good conversation that we're having because you're not the only one that 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 has those thoughts. There are going to be a group of people that are out there that are going to hear this, this, what we've been talking about this morning, that have the same, um, you know, questions. And so that's the way I would see it, though. You know, those are things that are of God, give to God. Those that are of Caesar, give to Caesar, which would be, in this case, our government, whoever it is. That, that ends up in the White House, and that's how we got to operate. Uh, I mean, when, when Addison said... Got a verse for you. Got a verse for you. First, first Timothy chapter 2. All right, let's do it. I may, I may not make it to Sandy Valley this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and you know first what? Timothy, first it's, Timothy it's, chapter it's, 2. And Sandy Valley will still exist. Amen. <laughs> Said, Maybe first, not. First, <laughs> or not, right? <laughs> first, first Timothy chapter two. <laughs> first Timothy two. First number one. First number one. Listen, listen, listen to the mindset of the Spirit of God when he uses Paul to prepare his young pastor who's coming along. <laughs> what he says to them. He says, I exalt, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty now I might ask you a question why is he asking you to pray for kings and those who are in authority so that we can get favorable decisions for the kingdom without no, no. without uh without no, actually, no. he that's says honest. it right there right in the text it says so that, that we, we can have a quiet and peaceable life and all godliness so that we might go about doing the kingdom work with the minimum amount of opposition that's what i'm saying people in authority can have impact and effects on your peace legit so <laughs> And also, but he doesn't say look push at, back. He doesn't say push back. He says pray. Yeah. He says intercede. He well, says well, intercession. We're looking at in a situation here. When I say push back, maybe I use the wrong term because they really got a worldly connotation to it. But in this situation, remember the type of government that they were under. This was not a democracy. The United States of America is. So even in, in, in the United States of America, every culture, every custom, every creed has the right to come out and voice his opinion until another dominating force says you can't. And what is happening with us as a body of believers, as the citizens of the kingdom of God, we are being told to shut up. Shut up what? What, what Albert, what? Cause you gonna preach, you gonna, you, you're preaching now. You gonna yeah, no, I, 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 I know it's gonna come anyway, but I'm saying we have a, a tool by which we can affect what the secular world in the, in the United States of America is it's doing. called prayer, supplication, and intercession. That's what it's called. <laughs> it's also called a vote. But I'm trying to figure out what, Elder, tell us exactly what you uh, said that you've been held out, not able to do. What do you not oh, there's out? nothing. That, that I, what I'm saying is, do we want to, do we want to purposefully put ourselves in a position where we're going to be preaching the gospel on that the in your call. Because of the that lie. That in your call. Of, You've been called to be put in that position. Yeah. You've been called to be slaughtered. Yeah. So what, what part have you not been able to do? That's what I'm trying to understand. You, you've been told to take up a cross. You, you, you just said that we should pray for them so that we can conduct our business in a peaceful manner as much as possible. Yes. That's what I'm saying about the situation that we're in in the United States of America. We should try to affect the, the laws and the legislations of this nation to ensure that we have a peaceful environment to continue to propagate this gospel. No, so I said it to you, there's a scripture that says, when we talk about preaching the gospel, he said, Lo, I come in the Bible of a book. So he, the, the whole scripture is set up that 66 books are written about one man, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What portion of it do we discount in order to preach Jesus Christ of Nazareth? What do you mean discount? What? Hey, wait, wait, hold that thought, hold that thought, because I got to go, guys. I got to go. Uh, Let's do this thing. I gotta go, man. <laughs> hey, I'm on I'm I'm this. Oh, oh, man. 
I want to hear it too. Go ahead, Brother Jackson, do the communion. All right. Get ready for the communion. Go ahead, let's get ready for the communion. Chris, we just. All right, dear Father in heaven, Lord, you are worthy to be praised, honored, and glorified. Dear Jesus, we thank you for who you are, Son of God, Savior of all mankind. Uh, right now, we just pause just for a second because there, there are other things that need to be, need to, need to happen uh, in reference to to uh, spreading that good news, dear Jesus. Yes, so, uh, forgive me uh, for for this this pause, but nevertheless, dear Lord, we know that that what you have done already this morning, what you will do in, in a few minutes, what you continue to do, is help us to grow. This is the kind of growth that needs to happen, Lord. You, 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 you're breaking those those uh, those those barriers that are that are in our way, so that we continue to grow in these these healthy conversations that we're having right now. In reference to your word, is what we need, so that we know how to go out and do. <laughs> Likewise, um, spread that gospel, that good news uh, in, in a loving manner. Dear Lord Jesus, we take this bread right now, we break it and eat it in remembrance of you. Amen. Amen. Take it and eat. <coughs> and likewise, dear Jesus, we take this cup in its contents. Is a, is, it's just a representation of your pure blood, but that that is not said um, uh, trivially, dear Jesus. Come on. Because your pure blood is the only blood sacrifice that the Father in heaven would accept yes. for the sins of this world. And those sins you took upon you. We were yet your enemies. In the flesh and in the spirit, we were your enemies, dear Jesus. And you displayed the love of God the Father yes. by voluntarily sacrificing your life on our behalf, taking our sins upon yourself, you who are innocent. And you did that. And as a result, God raised you on the third day, proving what he said about how he, how he so loved the world that he gave you his only begotten son. So now, Jesus, we remember you for who you are. We thank you. We say these things in your precious and holy name. Amen. We drink. Uh, now, before you go, Brother Jackson, I just want to say this thing with you. On Wednesday, uh, mm -hmm. the 21st of October, uh, mm -hmm. I, I was led to make a writing in my journal regarding this verse. Okay. Because I think what we don't realize <clears throat> is that we tend to neglect these things. We, we tend to neglect doing this thing that God is telling us that's going to have the most payout in the end. He said that if, if, if you really want to <clears throat> be used in a way so that the kingdom mission and work can go on in the most peaceful and straightforward way not only does not only is prayer and intercession weapon, it is also the means whereby you can get god involved to get the hand of god involved in government so that he stays the government hand in such a way that you can do the kingdom work without with, with the minimum amount of, of, of persecution but what we do is we, see what i ask myself is can I, from my own house, on my knees, impact what the kingdom of darkness is doing in the earth? Can I make an impact on Trump from my house? Can I make an impact on unrighteousness in, in my, from, in, from my, on my knees in my house? Mm -hmm. And I think what we have failed to understand, we've underestimated. <laughs> we've not really been convinced that, that prayer really is the form of weaponry. Yes, discussion really is a form of making taking direct hits upon the enemy. Amen. And because we won't come together and do that, things keep making getting worse and worse. When really, we ain't using the tools that God has availed to us. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to kind of share that with you. You guys can do it whatever you want, but it was important <laughs> enough for Him to press it on my heart. So look, you go look at that verse. If you talk about what you want to do, you want to make some impact. You do this. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right, brothers. Love All you guys. Right, man. Thank you, man. Peace, man. You guys, you guys as well. All right. So, so